grade 12 RT or information technology students. This is the video for you. It is a video series where we're going through the grade 12 PRAC exam or paper one from November 2023. And we are dealing with the third question or the OOP question. Make sure that you look at the video description for the links to the data file so you can practice this question paper before you watch the rest of this video. Also, you can jump to particular questions by looking at the links as well as seeing the links to the other questions for this exam paper. So let's get stuck into some OOP or object oriented programming. So we are dealing with, as I said, question three, which is the object oriented programming question. And yeah, they tell me the details. Now, please take note, you're dealing with two different programs. You're dealing with the main program, which is question three, and you're dealing with the school class, which is an incomplete object class that they've created for you. So make sure that you're working in both files. So there is the GUI for the question three part, but we are officially working the class and that's going to be 3.1. 3.2 will be working in the program that's going to use the object that we edit in 3.1. So let's go to 3.1. And so they tell me that there is an incomplete class for a T school that contains a declaration of four attributes. There's a name, there's the number of learners, if it's a public school or not. So that's true or false. Take note that it's true if it's public. And then the rating, which is an A, B, C or Z, depending on their percentage that they got for the pass rate. An incomplete constructor has been provided. So we're probably going to have to edit it. And we're going to start with 3.1.1. But before I do that, just take note that when you write your final exams, you have to write your examination number as a comment at the top. So with this question, for example, you'll see at the top that you put your examination number. So if you think about there are four questions, you can write your examination how many times? Not four times, but five times, because there is this other file in this question that you need to work in. Please make sure that when you're doing the object question that you double click on that file there, because this is where you're going to do 3.1. The question three is where we do 3.2. This is where we do 3.1. Make sure you click on that file to access the class and make sure that you put your examination number there. So there's the incomplete constructor they're the fields so we're going to obviously write constructed details here they've given me the attributes school name our total learners and public school that's the only values that they give they don't give anything regarding the rating but let's see what they ask for complete the code for the constructor we're going to assign the values from the parameter list to the corresponding field so we're going to allocate values to those fields based on those parameters and we're going to by default make the rating a z okay so that's easy we're going to take that value and put it into that field so we start with the fields remember f first so it is f school name must be assigned to the value that's coming in as a parameter there's no point to get a parameter and then we change that parameter here we are using that as information to go into the fields so remember field first so the next is f total number of learners which we're going to get from our total learners so take the parameter put it into the field then we're going to have f public school is going to be whatever b public school field is so we've allocated the parameters to the fields and then the last one is f rating which we said by default was going to be a z so there we've allocated the different values and that's as easy as it is let's move to the next question 3.1.2 write an accessor method accessor means we want to access the public school attribute which means we accessing it from outside which means we are going to be in another program like question three and we want to access this private field which we can't access directly so we want to send this to the other one so this is a function accessor methods are functions we want to get the public school what did they want us to call it get public school and we don't need any information we're simply going to return what that field is which is a boolean so we're going to return boolean value and we're going to press Control shift c and here's the code and we simply say the result is equal to whatever the public school field is send that field back 3.1.3 every year the rating of the school will be updated based on the percentage pass rate the percentage pass rate is calculated using the total number of learners who passed and the total number of learners at the school so the information in the table below is used so that's a pass rate so that's 80 percent or higher is an a a b is 60 to 79 and c is 60 and we need to write a method called update rating which receives the total number of learners who passed as a parameter it's going to use that value and the total learners to work out what the pass rate is and use this to set the value of f rating you'll notice there's nothing here about something being returned so this is not a function this is a procedure so because we saw nothing being returned we're going to call this procedure update rating but it does take in a parameter it says there that receives the total number of learners who passed as a parameter value which i'm assuming will be an integer 
because you can't have 0.3 of a student passing. So I'm going to call it I passed of type integer, and that's going to be my declaration. And then press Control Shift C. So now we are here at the code. We want to work out the pass rate. So let's first work out the pass rate. So the pass rate will be the number of learners that pass divided by how many learners there are in total. So that's the calculation. So let's go and make that'll be a real value. So our pass rate of type real. And we're going to say the pass rate is going to be the number of learners that passed divided by how many learners there are in total. That's the value from F total learners. We've got that in a field. So that's the pass rate. So now that we've got the pass rate, we are going to use this table to guide us. If the pass rate is 80 or higher, then we are going to give them a rating of A. So if our pass rate is greater than or equal to 80 because it's 80 or higher, then what are we doing? We are changing the rating attribute. We're going to change it to an A. So then R rating, not R rating, but F rating, the field rating is going to equal to an A. That's the only thing we do else. If the pass rate is not above 80, but it's above 60. So anything from 60 to 79. So that's anything above 60 will be a B. So if it is greater than or equal to 60, because it'll only get you if it's obviously less than 80, then the rating is going to be a B. Else, if it's lower than 60, then it's a C. So that's the only other option. Else, if it's not greater than 60, then it must be lower than it's going to equal to a C. And there we go. I think that's all. That's all we need to do. You could have had begins and ends there, but we're only doing one thing. So that's why I'll leave it like that. And that's the only thing we need to do. We're just updating this field based on the rating. 3.1.4, an amount of 145 rand and 50 cents is allocated per learner enrolled at the school. Write code to calculate the funding, which is basically the number of learners times about that amount. So write code to calc and return. You see the word return? So this is returning. So this is a function. And so that looks like it's going to return a real. So we're going to come here and write a function called calc funding it doesn't take in any values it doesn't say anything about taking any values in it just needs the number of learners enrolled which we've got as a field and that value so we're simply going to return a real control shift c and we are going to say result is equal to that 145.50 multiplied by the number of learners which is f i think total learners if i remember correctly there we go so take the number of learners times about that and that's what we're returning in the calc funding so there we go that seems correct then move on to 3.1.5 write code for a two string function we know that's a function because we're returning a string and we are going to display like that the boolean attribute by the way must be used to determine whether the phrase public school or private school is displayed so we're not going to actually display the public school field but just the word private or public school so that's an example of what it's going to look like so i'm actually going to copy that because i can do that because the paper is digital and we're going to come here to write our function called to string which returns a string variable control shift to see so we want something that looks like this i'm going to construct a string so variable s line of type string and the string is going to be what i display so I'll start off with s line being the name of the school which we get from the school name field then after that we're going to add that so we need it on a new line so i'm actually going to put a hash 13 and then i'm going to add this many dashes so i'm going to do that as a line so let's do that and that's my first part of my string then i'm going to say s line is equal now i'm not going to change s line i want to take whatever's currently in it and add on more stuff so i'm going to add in this text total number of learners plus the field for the total number of learners which will be f total but remember we are returning a string so if i come over here just so you can see we're returning a string so this is an integer converted from an int to a string so that's the next line and then we must go to a new line so i'm actually going to put a hash 13 there then s line is going to be equal to whatever's in s line plus the word rating plus whatever the rating is so that's going to be f rating plus another hash 13 and then we're going to have the word public school so what i'm going to do here is go if the public school field equals true then we're going to say s line is equal to s line plus the word public school else if it's not a public school then we're going to do the exact same thing but we're going to use the word private here instead there we go i think that's exactly what they want so let's leave it at that 
and that means that my s line is now complete but that doesn't mean that we finished we want to still return that so remember once you've done that then you must say at the end result is equal to whatever this s line is so we created a string we kept adding on to it s line s line plus more stuff add more stuff add more stuff then we send back s line as our final answer so i think that's all done for question 3.1 we now move on to 3.2 now take note we can't actually test any of those functions and procedures to see if they work we can only discover if they work properly here so we might have to go back and edit them if we need to if we made mistakes but you can run it to see if there are any errors in your syntax and as you can see it runs so therefore that code is all correct so now we move to the main program and this is 3.2 so we're going to jump down to question 3.2.1 the user must enter the school name in the edit box and the total number of learners in that spin edit and then tick whether it's a public school or not by the checkbox and we can extract those details and use that information to instantiate a new school object and then display the details in the rich edit control so that seems quite simple so we're going to come over here to instantiate the object so we first need to get the name of the school so s name which is going to be a string we need the number of learners so r total which is going to be the number of learners and then if they're a public school or not i will make a, a b public of type thin ghost i mean boolean get it thin ghost because it's a boo that's lean so let's go and get the values we're first going to get the name which we're going to get from the edit box the dot text property and that's a string to a string so that's fine and the total we're going to get from the spin edit which is a dot value field so that's an integer to integer so that also works and then my b public is going to get whatever is from the checkbox i think a chb checkbox one whatever its checked property is remember the checked property if it's checked it means the checked will be true which means b public will be true which means it's public if it's not checked it'll be false so that's how i get the three values and then we can instantiate our object you will see that there's a global variable of object school that's been declared for us so we can use that in our code so i'm going to come here and go obj school now we want to instantiate so we want to call the create method now that seems to make sense of how we normally call our functions and procedures in that but it's not with the constructor please don't do that with the constructor it's not like that you're going to make it equal to what it is it's a t school object whatever you have it over there that's the type of object dot create this is the only method which works like this the rest of them are the object school dot whatever dot whatever two string dot whatever this is the only one where you want to make it equal to what object is dot create and then you give it its value so we need the name which is in my name field we need the total number of learners which is my our total field and we need to give it if it's public school or not which is my be public field so i give those three values to send to the create which means it'll come here and use the constructor to create my object so that we've instantiated which means we got the values we instantiate it now we must display the values in the rich edit which using the two strings so we can say the rich edit dot lines dot add and we're going to simply say my object school dot to string because that's going to return a string and that string is going to go into the member control and display it so let's test it so we've got those three values we're going to instantiate the object there we go okay so we've picked up our first mistake we have not got a new line after the word total number of learners so there's my first little error so i'm going to come back here and you see how we've tested that so we're going to come down to the two string and so after the, the line over here we actually need to put another hash 13 so that we can go to a new line after that so that we can put that on a new line so there we go there's there's our first mistake that we picked up so let's move on to the next question 3.2.2 the rating school is determined by the pass rate the spin edit question 2 2 must be used to enter the number of learners that passed and then we're going to call the update rating using that value we're going to call the two strings so that's basically what we're doing there so we're going to get that value using the update rating so i'm going to double click here we are simply going to call our object dot update rating and we need to give it how many people pass and that's from the spin edit q322 dot value you could have put that into a variable that would have also worked do they mention about anything about putting it into a variable no they simply say get the value from that spin edit and put it into update rating so we get the value that they type in over there we send it to our object with the update rating method and then we're simply going to call the two string function again which is exactly what we did there so i can literally just copy that line and paste it so let's test it 
Now remember we can't click on this because we haven't instantiated our object. We first need to do this part first, which as you can see is correct. And then we're going to click on this because this will not work if our object hasn't been instantiated. And there we can see that its rating has changed to a C, which doesn't seem correct. If I make it 500, that C rating doesn't seem correct. Let's just, if I made it the exact amount, that's 100% rating. That doesn't seem correct. We've made a mistake somewhere in the update. So let's go to our update rating. Ah, a little bit of a flaw in my logic here, yeah, the pass rate. So if I get 80 students that passed out of 100, that's not going to equal, that's going to equal to 0 0.8. So these should actually be decimal values. So either we must multiply this by 100, we can do that, or we just refer to this as 80 divided by 100, which is 0 0.8. 0.8 and this must be 0.6 so that's a percentage so don't forget that's a percentage you must multiply by 100 in that case or you can just refer to the decimal versions of the pass rate so 80 percent is 80 divided by 100 which is 0.8 either one would be correct so you could have also used 80 divided by 100 as your value there or you could have just multiplied by 100 to that value and then kept it as 80 and 60 so let's go test it so we instantiate the object, so that should make it an A rating, which is correct, but if we make it 500, that should be a C rating. There we go, so we can see that it did change accordingly. That's much better. So let's go to our next one, 3.2.3. Funding will be available to puppy schools only. Use the rich edit display the output. And we're using the rich edit display the output. We're going to write code that we're going to call the calculate funding method, but only if the school is a public school. So if it's a public school, we're going to say something like that. If it's not a public school, then we're going to say that. Just a little tip, whenever you're doing objects and you've got all these methods, make sure that you're using all of them. There's no way that they're going to ask you to create a method and you're not going to need to use it. So we've used the constructor, we've used the update rating, we've used the two string. We have not used the get public school and we haven't used that. So because it's the last question, I'm going to assume that we're going to use these two in this last question. So keep track of that. So over here, calculate funding. So we got to work out if the school is public or not. So that's going to be using the get public school method. So it's the object school dot get public school. If that equals true, because that's going to return whether it's a public school or not. If it's true that we know it's a public school, then what do we need to do? There's a few things. The first thing we need to do is to work out how much funding they're going to get. If you remember correctly, that's going to return a real. So we actually need to have a variable for that. So I'm going to make a variable called R funding top real and we're going to say our funding is going to equal to whatever the object school is dot get funding and that's going to get my answer and then we're going to display in the rich edit we're going to display the following text public school will receive and that's how much funding so I'm going to type it quickly so there we have the value, but remember we want to display it as a currency and we need to convert it from a real to a string. So we're going to convert it from a float to string F and we want to say FF currency, comma eight, comma two. So to two decimal places, display the funding to two decimal places as a currency. So that's what happens if the school is public. If it's not else, what do we do? Then we just say no funding available. So I'm just going to copy this and say, no funding available, just like it is. So let's test that out. I think that's all that they wanted. Let's go test it. Again, we can't do this button unless we've instantiated the object. So let's go click on this one first. And then we can actually go and do funding. And there we go. I think that value is the same as what we wanted earlier. So I think that's working. So if we deselect it and we instantiate the object, so now it's a private school and we click on funding, it'll go no funding available. So there we go. I think that's correct. I think that's all done. That seems to be all the questions. And then we're done with the OOP question. We can now move on to the final question, which is a raise. Don't forget to do two things, and that is subscribe to the channel and make sure that you share us with your friends so they can subscribe too. Follow us on our other channel at Miss Long Computer Terms and on TikTok at Miss Long Education. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Did the Mr. Longway.